Simo been given any more indication about what round two might look like? No, no, not yet. I think I think they were getting pretty close, and then obviously South Australia threw a bit of a curveball. So um, look, we're all happy to wait to get it right. I don't think it's going to be more than a four-week, five-week plan, but no, we haven't got any details yet. Uh, it's been really good. Yeah, unfortunately, it hasn't been. Uh, we have, we can't get 45 guys together. We can only train in groups of eight, and. Um, you know, a lot of it, the work's been done in the indoor hall we've got, so not quite the the complete feel yet, but better than training in pairs. Some teams have been moving their stars aside to train. You have your guns through the midfield all together as well. You don't have any fears about them training together? Oh, uh, yeah, you know, I think there's always a fear in the back of your mind, but yeah, we we decided to train our lines for, for today and Monday. We got tested today, so we can change groups for Friday. So um, we'll mix them up for Friday. So we're trying to get the best of both worlds with with our training groups. And um, yeah, fingers crossed that nothing untoward happens. In terms of helping your squad, uh, Tommy Cole, who hurt himself early balls, and maybe Jared Cameron, are they two that come into the mix early part of the season? Yeah, I think most squads now across the competition have been pretty healthy. So I think we've got three or four guys in rehab um, we probably had five or six guys before we, we broke off and we probably had five or six guys underdone as well. So they've, they've had a good training block and um, yeah, we've probably got 38 or 39 players who are right to play. Just going back to round two, obviously a bit of talk about a derby showdown in your home states to start off. Is there a preference to do that or are you quite happy to lock away the Gold Coast if that's what's... Yeah, um, look, it's it's a difficult question because we haven't been given any approval in, in WA to play. So we can train in, in smaller groups and, and that's that's been great for us and we'll get that in the next two weeks. But until the government lifts some restrictions or, or gives us that green light, I, I don't think that's part of the equation yet. So um, smarter people than me will be working on that one. So you don't think the changes in South Australia changes that scenario at all? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, have they been given permission to play a game in South Australia? Permission to full train. To full train, yeah. So I, I suppose there's another level to get to that, and perhaps that's why there's a b been a bit of a hold on the fixture. Adam, do you get to move together? Do you take the opportunity to talk about the challenge and I guess the opportunity to win the premiership in the fixture and then the circumstances, or do you sort of have to keep focus more short term given all kinds of? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. I'm working through that. Uh, to to what what level do you need to address what's happening? Um, how far do you project? Quite often you do these things at the start of pre-season, you, know, you know, sort of project long-term and then you get on with business and the week-to-week -week process. So we might have to start all that again. So that that'll probably can't take place this week because we just can't get together as a group. Team meetings are really hard and everything's sort of done out on the track. So next week we'll get together as a group and I think Monday might be a session where we can actually have a bit of contact and get together as a group. So we'll have a chat then. You can't get very contact that quickly if you get back in. I don't know, I think the boys are pretty keen. So, um, Look, we can't go too hard. Well, I think we've got five contact sessions before we play. Uh, I think it'll be enough. For the, the, the early indications with our group is they're really fit. Um, they've done all the, the things required and, and, in essence, done another two months of pre-season, really. It's uh, three months pre-season, play one game, another two months of uh, training, a few tapered sessions in that, and now we, we ramp it up again. How close will they be flat out in that first contact I reckon they'll be flat out, but we'd, it'll probably be in a shorter burst and we're we'll just trying to extend it each, each session. So, um, yeah, we're working through that today, a bit of training planning. Still got to get some data from how they've pulled up Monday and Wednesday, but I, I, no one's pulling up sore, which tells me they've done the work. So can you plan for contact and then maybe result in injuries, whether it be collision injuries or soft tissue injuries? Oh, we can't plan for it, but I think it's going to happen. Um, but that, that happens all the time. So, you know, the fact is we've got everyone available because they haven't had any contact. I think it's, a, it's pretty obvious that uh, that's part of the game. The collisions, how do you prepare them for, you know, those type of uh, injuries that happen in game? You just got to find that line where hopefully you don't cross it. But you do, you do get injuries at training. And I suspect across the board, once things get elevated, there'll be different types of injuries that pop up that haven't been there for the last two months. Have you locked away how many players you might take up at the Gold Coast yet? And obviously the fringe player yeah. scenario is a bit of a tricky one. Yeah, we're working through that as well. Um, we still haven't got the protocols, the full protocols of what, what's going to happen when we travel. So do we take the whole group? Um, you know, I think there's an understanding there might be a, a, a ability for our younger guys to play 
against another side in, in, in the hub. So if that's the case, you probably need to take most of the boys, but um, we're still working through that. Is everyone ticked off saying yes, we will go to the Gold Coast or the play? No, not quite. No, we're still working through what it looks like, you know, how long we're going to be there, um, getting a bit of guidance on that. It, that. That would be handy for not just the players, but our staff as well. And, and with 25 of our staff are going to go and be in the same environment, which is fine, but they, they've probably got a, different issues with more mature families and, and children. So that's that's something we're, we're, we're working through. Is it fair to say it's the family issue? Is the, the family's issue is the, the, the most pressing thing? I think, I think the issues for us on the, the duration will be, whatever it is, you've got to add a couple of weeks on top because when you come back, you're in quarantine and that, that, um, that adds to the anxiety. So um, we'll work through it. It's not insurmountable, but we, just, we, know, we need to know a bit more detail. So you your young players change they have to team up like, to get a full team? You have to, you say, three man, Adelaide and Adelaide. Combined teams? So we won't do that. Uh, we might just have to be 15 on 15 or uh, it'll be a more of a scrimmage and, you know, just to get the competitive juices flying for the guys who don't get to play. So we've got, I think, 43 players uh, on our list available at the moment, which that doesn't equate to two teams. So we'll, we'll have to be a modified type of game. Do you like an extended bench when it starts because of the different build-up and, and the potential for soft tissue? Uh, personally, uh, probably not. feels like there's a lot of change happening as is and to, to add another layer in. Um, but I'd fully understand if we, we got to that agreement uh, because of the players and the, the health and safety of playing after such a short pre-season. So um, personally, probably don't, don't think we need it, but I could understand why we would. So can I just backtrack? You're saying there may be still a couple of players that just completely haven't ticked off saying yes, we'll go? Well, we haven't got the full you know, spectrum of what's going to happen. So how long are we going for? What are the protocols when we go to the hub? The AFL are working really hard and that got to understand that there's four clubs with hundreds of questions. So once we get that locked away, we can actually go to our staff and our players and give them the real clarity of what, what's in front of them. But everyone's keen. It's It's not... You know, insurmountable some of the questions we've got um, in our mind, but yeah, everyone's pretty keen to get there. And I'm just say, just, there's, a, there's a bit of talk around that uh, a few players, a few Eagles players, may not actually get paid for the rest of the year because there's no job keeper. What are your thoughts on that at this stage? Well, that's another issue, I suppose, with, with our players playing for half their wage. I mean, everyone loves to play AFL and, you know, a lot of people say they'll do it for nothing, but there's bills to pay as well. And, you know, to put the guys in a situation where they've got to travel away for weeks and weeks to, to get that clarity of what what they need. Um, yeah, the, that's the AFLPA and the AFL to work through, but we've got probably eight or nine players and, you know, it's pretty tough to pay the bills at the moment. Yeah, so those players could actually, I mean, because they've been paid initially, but then they won't play a game of footy or may not play a game of footy, they, they do face a situation where they might not get paid. Yeah, I, look, every every player has got a different issue. So, um, you know, we've got to work through 43 of them. The AFL have got to work through 800 of them. So we, we'll concentrate on our players. But, yeah, we've, we've got seven or eight players who are working through some challenges that they're unique, you know, unique to AFL players. Did the AFL come to the party and help them out? No, that's... That's different. That's that's AFL politics. I'm not going to get into. I'll let the PA work out, work on that. But that, look, it would put a lot of minds at ease if they could work something out. Uh, no, no more clarity for next year. So this year we've got some some pretty clear guidelines. Albeit our situation is a bit different with um, with staffing. And if we don't take everyone to the Gold Coast, what does that mean for the rest of the staff back here and how do we manage our players? So that's something we've got to work through, but no, we haven't had any direction of soft cap or the modelling for next year. One of the ideas that's uh, come up as we sort of look through all the changes that happen at the moment is potentially around a night grand final. It's not a new discussion. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. That bores me. <laughs> Whatever they want to do. Yeah, um, that's that's really, really low on my uh, agenda, the night grand final, but it'd be good to be in it. Should this be the year though, those sort of things are considered? Like it doesn't. I, I'm not. I'm really. I don't have an opinion. Sorry. Adam, you mentioned the short pre-season. Is there a greater imperative to get this three and a half weeks right when it comes to the the big game? The teams that get this three weeks right are going to have an advantage in the short season. Uh, I, look, I think so. Yeah. But I, my gut feel is that every player in the competition, or close to every player, has done the right thing, and um, they seem to be in pretty good shape. 
So the, the contact's going to be the biggest issue, the speed and change of direction. That, that's really hard to train on your own, but I, I'm sure every strength and conditioning coach has put that in the program. So we'll probably have more of an indication by the end of next week, but early signs are that, yeah, they're not too far off. So we'll, you know, it's three weeks enough. It's probably not, but it's, it won't be too far away. Do you know which assistance you'll be taking with you at the stage? Yeah, no, we, we, we've got to submit the, the 25, so we're, we're working under that umbrella at the moment. I would say who will go to be your match day coaching panelists? Yeah, we've work, we worked through that. No, no, I don't, I don't think that's... You can work that one out. Do your digging. Uh, the Gov, the except that the Gov lost a fair few kilos. I don't know what Gov's done. Yeah, he's looking good. Uh, he, he's, he's as good a shape as I've ever seen him, so... Um, I think he's a big one for the remote program. He might be... Uh, advocating that next year. Is that your request that he loses? No, you know, you know he's won, oh, he's, is it four All-Australians in a row? So he's a pretty good player. I don't know, I don't think he needs to do too much. <laughs> we all got pretty bored in the, uh, in the isolation. So yeah, he's, he's got some good feedback on that too from his players, his teammates. One other player, what's the last game yeah. Well, I think it's, it's, there's text messages that from all of us that you know keep in communication with him, but it's um, I don't think anything's changed. We hadn't had any direction of any more certainty on that. So it's look, it's been probably six to eight months now. So um, hopefully that gets up and going soon, just for his own personal well-being. The frustration, I guess, for him and more so than the club. Yeah. Oh, look, I mean, everything was self-inflicted, so we've got to work through it and understand the process, but it'd be great to know and get some clarity on that for him and his family.